Here's Brody Brazil. First off, let me establish that I'm a big fan of Sphere. I got to visit Sphere within the last two months for the NHL draft at the end of June. And yes, I'm calling it Sphere, not The Sphere, because I've been told that's the proper way to put it. But unfortunately, to the point of this video, Sphere Las Vegas is apparently losing a lot of money. It hasn't been around for a very long time, but within the last 12 months, it's close to half a billion dollars. And even within the last three months, the trends have gone way up in terms of their losses. It's a bit concerning. They're going to have to do something about it. I was tipped off to this story by Vital Vegas. And let me just do something here real quick that apparently is very hard for some media members in Las Vegas to do. And that's to give Scott Robin of Casino.org a lot of credit. Scott and Vital Vegas and his Twitter account, they are amazing. They're all over everything. Las Vegas. And so, so that's where I saw this headline. That's where I saw this story. I'm taking a lot of information from Scott's work and his uh, documentation and coverage of this. And I'll expand on it a little bit. But again, all credit initially goes to Scott for finding this, pointing it out and getting it out there. And as Scott puts it on Casino.org, as losses mount, can Sphere stay afloat? That's a big question. But first things first here. I think Sphere already has great awareness and understanding uh, from outsiders, from people across the country. I mean, before I had ever been there, and I certainly didn't even get to go to a U2 concert or get to see the Eagles play there. I was only there for the NHL draft, which certainly didn't get to feature all of the amenities of the building, like the sound system and all the performance side of it that they do for a concert. But I guess what I'm saying is a lot of people from around the country are aware of Sphere. They know it exists. They know what it is. They think it's pretty cool. It's not like a surprise or something like they have to get the word out. Sphere already has great awareness and understanding. And the second point to make here is it already kind of feels like part of Vegas. It's got personality. It's on the skyline. You can see it when you land at the airport. It's off in the distance a little bit. Like It, it has already ingrained itself in Las Vegas as much as any other big attraction. Like It, it stands out. It fits in. It does all of the above. And I do want to say my first visit, it was not a letdown. I did feel like I'd already been there before because I looked up some videos. I was very interested. What does the inside look like? What does the atrium look like? What does it look like on the outside at night? I had seen enough videos that when I actually got there, I was like, oh yeah, this is exactly how I knew it would be. And it was not, I was not let down by that. I also want to say that I think the venue is nowhere near its full potential. Like it is, it is a canvas. It's not a blank canvas, but there's still a lot of room to paint on this canvas and, and ways to do things. And hopefully for them, a lot of new ways to make more money. And I do think that Sphere could be duplicated. I know they talked about doing a duplicate one in law, uh, in London, so Las Vegas in London, but apparently in the UK, they said, nah, we're good with that. We don't want one of those. I don't know where else they would put one to be quite honest with you. New York or Los Angeles, it has to go somewhere that flashiness and, and this kind of absurdity, so to speak, is allowed. But I don't know where else they could do it. But I do feel like if they did this right and they made some money off it, it could be a template to be done somewhere else. But here are the main points. As Scott pointed out on Vital Vegas and Casino.org, this cost $2.4 billion to put up. And now the reality of that cost is sinking in. And because Sphere Entertainment Company is publicly traded, we have all the information from the fiscal 2024 year, specifically the fiscal 2024 fourth quarter, which fourth quarter, wait, it just ended June 30th. Yeah, it somehow did. But we have that information and it's not good. The Sphere itself, not MSG Networks, which is a part of Sphere Entertainment Company. I'm talking about just the actual Sphere Las Vegas or Sphere Las Vegas. It lost $104.5 million dollars in the three months of what, May? No, April, May, and June. And that's up $9.3 million from the prior quarter of what, like January, February, March, right? So it's trending bad and, it's, and the trend is only getting worse from the first three months of this year to the second three months. But overall in the past 12 months, 12 calendar months, they've lost 480 Point four million million, basically 
half a billion dollars. Sphere has lost, and they're new. And this is the time where more people should be checking them out and more people should be spending their dollars to go check it out. So we'll analyze the loss here a little bit more. And this actually comes straight from the Sphere news alert, news release that they put out. Fiscal 2024 fourth quarter selling, general and administrative expenses of $102.1 million increased $11.8 million, or 13%, as compared to the prior year quarter, primarily due to higher employee compensation and related benefits, and to a lesser extent, higher professional fees. Well, that's not good. If these are standard run-of-the-mill things that maybe you could and should have seen coming. This isn't like, well, part of the roof caved in or needed to be replaced, or this is something we could not have projected or expected. Okay, you're having a rough year. You're having a rough quarter. That's fine. But these are things like employee compensation and related benefits and higher professional fees than you expected. I mean, somebody misjudged that, and now they're they're paying the true accurate amount And they also spent a lot to put up this building. And so now all these things are kind of compounding a little bit. There's also this, not just the money that they're spending, but the money they're not making. And I'm not talking about from shows and concerts that come in. I'm talking about the exosphere. So, right, like the inside of the sphere, it's one big ceiling screen. It's very cool. I was just told, by the way, it's not even 8K. It's 16K resolution. And I believe it. Unbelievably crisp and sharp. But the exosphere generated $15 million in quarter four of 2024, so April, May, June, advertising fees. So like when they put the the ad up for Trolls, Trolls pays a certain amount. And I'll, I'll give you that amount in just a second. Like you will be blown away when you realize how much somebody pays to get their advertisement up on that exosphere, right? Because they're trying not to make this too commercial, They're trying to have the sphere do cool things and have people look at it. So it's not a billboard the entire time. It's generally not a billboard. So when they put something up, they want it to hit. They want people to see it. They want the company to get their value out of it. They want it to be very exclusive to advertise on that exosphere. Problem is they've made it too exclusive. It was projected to make $100 million annually. If you extrapolate 15 times four for four quarters, that's 60 million, not 100 million. So they're down 40% on exosphere advertising. So they need more people and more companies and more things like the Trolls movie to advertise or pay a higher amount. So how do we fix all this? I'm not a genius. I don't have a background in running this type of business, but I do I do have a few things to put together here. Number one, they obviously need to refinance. And through Scott's article at casino.org, uh, they have to refinance uh, $850 million in debt They have to do that by October of 2024. Um, That's only a month and a half away. It's coming up quick. But that's number one, like to survive, to keep going, to keep their business going. They have to do that. I would imagine they're already on that. Hopefully that all comes together for them. But now the rest of these things are more ideas from me. Number one, you need more residencies. I mean, what were you planning on doing with this venue? You just wanted to build it to see if you could. And you, you had you too christen it, launch it. U2 was there for a couple months. Everybody was raving about how good those shows and concerts were. And now pretty soon you're going to have the Eagles coming in there, but they're only in for like weekends and most weekends, but not every weekend. And that's about it. And I think that ends in December or January. So that's a limited little stint for the Eagles. And it's only a couple nights a week. You need more residencies. You need to be lined up where it's like 2025, at least the first half of 2025 is already spoken for. And it's somebody on a very consistent basis, like at least four nights a week. Like they need to own the sphere. I said the, they need to own sphere for months at a time and say, this is where we're playing. This is our residency. Uh, They need to get ahead of that curve. And I understand there's a huge production element. Like you can't just come in there and play an average show and not have the screens doing cool stuff. It takes so much work and so much effort and so much cost to do that pre-production for the actual concert. This is not a normal venue. I totally get that. And who can really say, hey, we're going to come off our tour and spend three straight months in Las Vegas? I mean, some do. And artists have done that before. But Sphere needs to attach themselves to the biggest names and do more residencies. I think they also obviously need more affordable ads. 
Like the reports, oh, by the way, the reports are, and apparently it was like $2 million a day during Super Bowl week. And I should have got to that too. All of this revenue comes at a time where Sphere just hosted the NHL draft. As a revenue maker, Sphere also had, in the first quarter of this calendar year, they had the Super Bowl down in Las Vegas. And during that, they were charging $2 million a day for advertising on the exosphere. But on typical days, it's only, only $450,000 a day to advertise on the exosphere. That's that's still an amazing cost. Like, could, do you think if you just opened it up a little bit more, you, you might gain more revenue because of it? You might double your revenue because of it? I also think that what they need to start doing, and I realize they're new now and I'll give them time to do this, but they need to start building their library of shows for these off-day events. There's not going to be a concert there every night. So what are you doing on a Tuesday morning at 10 and at noon and at 2 and at 4 and at 6 and at 8? And you know what? And 10 and midnight. I don't care. What show are you doing? What experience are you doing? They've already got one. I think another one is coming out. Was it postcard to the planets or something, whatever. But they need more things like that. They need more shows and acts that people would just say, hey, I'll go see that. And maybe you're not charging top dollar, but you're making money and you're making sure that that venue, that building makes money on an everyday basis. So those are my ideas. Good or not, I don't know. You tell me in the comment section below. I'm rooting for Sphere. I hope it makes it. They spent a lot, but it just goes to show you even a good idea like this and even something well executed and placed perfectly and surrounded by money and opportunity and all the right people, even that is still hard to pull off and actually be successful. Like in a time where I just said they just had the Super Bowl there and they had the NHL draft there and people are talking about it. There's some buzz about Sphere and it's still lost almost half a billion dollars in the last 12 months. Hard to do things down there. It's a competitive landscape. You don't just get to go to Las Vegas and print money. But let me know what you think in the comment section below about all this. And while you're down there, thumbs up for this video. I would love that. Actually, that'd be great, right? It'll help me, this video, and this channel. But what I would love even more is if you go down there right now, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Hit that subscribe button so I can definitely see you back here next time.